This is a roadmap of eight projects that you can do in order. These projects are going to help you develop your hands-on experience. They're going to help you develop your technical skills and you're going to get exposure to a whole bunch of different technology along the way. So project one, if you're going to the effort of learning all of this really cool technology and developing all of these skills, then you need to talk about it. You need to put that somewhere and tell people exactly what you're doing. You can build a portfolio. You can build your own website. A free way to do that is just on GitHub. Mine pretty much looks like this. And on the homepage of my profile, you can see this bit of text here. This is quite easy to add and it's not there by default. If you want to add something like this, then all you have to do is create a new repository. Just click on the plus, click on new repository. You want to give it the same name as the owner. In my account, this would be Jared O'Brien, as you can, well, if I spell it right. As you can see, this is already taken because I already have it, but it says here, this is a special repository that you can use to add a readme to the GitHub profile. So that's exactly what you want to do. You want to type in your name here and then you want to go down and you want to tick this box to add readme and then just click on create repository. Once you do that, then you will have a new readme file that's available here. You can easily edit that just by clicking on the pencil and that is going to bring you in here and you can modify this to start showing all of the amazing, wonderful projects that you're working on. You don't need to spend weeks doing this making this perfect just get something up there just so you have a portfolio that you can start showing people if you want to just get started straight away then go on my github and just steal mine just copy mine into yours modify it and that should get you moving pretty quick so project two this is where the fun start to happen we're going to build ourselves a very good home network now, there's a few things and a few different ways that you can do that and i suppose it sort of depends on your circumstances and what you want to do in terms of it whenever i first started in it i wanted to do networking networking is what i wanted to do so i got myself a really good ccna lab i had like about nine different switches and it was perfect for me for learning and getting those ccnas at the start so you can easily pick up some good network switches on ebay the only downfall with these is they are well they can be quite loud running in your house and it's probably not something you're going to have running all the time another suggestion that you can get to build your own home lab is to start getting some of these these managed switches like tp link or netgear some of these smaller switches the eight port switches the switches themselves are really quiet so you can have them running in your house and they're, they're pretty cheap to run those devices allows you to configure vlans and access lists and stuff on them so you can start to build more complex networks at home if you don't want to buy any physical gear you just want to build networks virtually then there is two other virtual environment platforms that you can use evng is a really good one and um, you can run this on hardware if you have it you can also run it as a vm on a laptop or something it does require a decent amount of resources to be able to run it is a good platform and um, it's very well documented the other one is gns3 gns3 is a piece of software that you can download and install on your laptop and again you can build like cisco devices and other firewalls there's a whole pile of devices that you can build with evng and gns3 now before somebody goes crazy in the comments there is one problem with gns3 and evng and that is you need to find the images for those devices you want to run for example say you wanted to build a cisco environment you need to have the Cisco firmware images that you can import into those platforms to be able to build those devices. And unfortunately, they can be quite tricky to find. If you're good enough on Google and you're dedicated enough, then you will find them. They aren't as hard to find as what they used to be. There is other websites that you could possibly search to find these images like GitHub that could be a place that you could search the other way you can do this is if you know people in the industry if you know people that work in different it companies or maybe you work for an it company you could ask people in that team to log into their portal and download the image for you you're only going to use this in a lab so there shouldn't be any problems with that now if you don't have any of those you don't want to buy some physical gear or use these platforms and you still have another choice and that is cisco packet tracer cisco packet tracer is a really cool tool and i used it back in the day while i was doing all my cisco certification it's completely free you can go on to netacad.com it does come with a bunch of learning content now and it also has a bunch of templated networks so you can open them up and you can click through them and you can start to see how things are configured so that is a bunch of different options that you can use to start building your own home network 
The next thing you need to do is to start building things on top of that home network. And that's when you start to play around with virtualization and containers. There is loads of different options that you can use to start playing around with virtualization. Now to make it simple for you, I am just gonna choose one and recommend this for you to use. Proxmox is a hypervisor that you can download and you can run. You can install it on a piece of hardware that you have. You can even buy an Intel NUC and just install it on that. That will allow you to build virtual machines and containers and it's a really good entry point into the world of virtualization. I created a video on installing Proxmox on a server that I have and I will link it here. Check that out if you're interested. If you don't have hardware or a server to run that on, then get some sort of virtualization platform that you can install on your laptop. Now there's two good options that you can use. One of them is VirtualBox. That's a tool you can download and you can run and you can build virtual machines on. The other one is VMware Workstation Pro. Now this used to be a paid tool and now it is free. Once you have mastered virtualization and you've played around, you've built a number of different virtual machines and you sort of have a good idea how it works, then go into the next phase of that, which is containerization, which is talking about Docker and other containers. Docker Desktop, is a tool that you can download and you can basically create containers you can pull them down from docker hub and you can run a bunch of different stuff if you don't want to use docker then you still have other options podman is another tool that you can download again this is a tool that will help you build containers on your laptop you can pull them down from docker hub or other places as well two good tools that will help you and give you a good introduction to containers so next phase you basically have your home network you've looked at virtualization you've built vms containers you know all of that stuff the next thing for you is to start looking at tools that's going to help you in the role that you want to get into if you are in cybersecurity and you want to get your first job, then knowing and understanding how a seam works is important. So I would use my new virtualization platform, whatever one I've created, and I would build myself a seam. Now there's two different versions or two, two different products that you could use. The first one is Wazoo. Wazoo is an open source platform that you can download and run on your own home environment. This is really, really good. And out of the two I'm going to talk about, this is the one that I would probably recommend. It's free. It's well documented and I just like it. It can do a lot of different stuff and it's, it's just a, it's a nice user interface and it's just a cool tool to use. The other one is Splunk. Splunk is another tool you've most definitely heard about and most big organizations will be using this tool. Now you can download the Splunk Enterprise free trial and then after I think 30 days the trial gets limited to 500 megs so you continue to run that in your own home environment. I would say if you wanted to download these tools, download and build both, play around with them. And if you wanted to run one more permanently in your home network, then I would probably go with Wazoo. The next project is all about getting thrown outside your comfort zone and there's literally no better way to do that than joining Capture the Flags. All of the previous projects that we have worked on are things that you have done yourself in your home lab and the real world doesn't really work like that. You are usually thrown into an environment that you haven't set up or you don't really know anything about so you have to be able to navigate your way around and Capture the Flags are just a really good opportunity to improve your technical skills. And speaking of CTFs, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Sneak. On February 27th, Sneak and John have are going to get together and they're going to host a virtual capture the flag competition it's on for 12 hours there's going to be thousands of players competing against each other to solve 20 plus challenges across cloud security web security binary exploitation and this is just the perfect opportunity to improve your technical skills you can join this event as an individual or a team there's a bunch of different prizes that you can win like the MataQuest 3s vr headsets you can join for the full 12 hours or you can just join for 30 minutes it's really up to you this is also a really good opportunity to gain some cpe credits so if you're interested in joining the event click on the link in the description below all of the event details you need is there so project number six is two platforms that you've definitely heard of before and that is TriHack Me and Hack the Box. TriHack Me offers a lot of free training. There is a learning roadmap which sets you on your way that'll tell you everything you need to do. There is also some learning paths. If you want to drill into say red teaming or security engineering, that path is already there for you to follow. You can also do some stuff around cloud training. There's a SOC simulator. There's a lot of cool stuff on TriHack Me. Hack the Box is another platform that gives you a bunch of free training. There's lots of cybersecurity courses 
and again it's all broken up into learning paths and modules and stuff so it's really easy to follow both platforms have got free versions and paid versions if i was to start these two platforms again i would do try hack me first and then hack the box the next thing you want to do is to start maybe building some other things at home that will help you in your journey. This is a whole bunch of awesome honeypots. As you can see here, there's so many different honeypots that you can download and you could build in your home environment. You can look down through this list and you can see there's database honeypots, there's web honeypots. You can add these to your virtualization platform. You can get these servers up and going and then you can start to ingest those logs into your seam and start to build some alerting and really just start to play around with all of those products and see what you can do with them. This video was originally supposed to be seven projects and then last weekend I found this one. This is called Flare VM and this is a bunch of scripts that you can download on a Windows VM and you can use those scripts and tools to start doing malware analysis. Malware analysis is something that I'm new to myself and I've just started playing around with this stuff but I just wanted to add it to this video as a project that you could look into along the way. So that's it. That is a roadmap of eight projects that you can do. Following through these eight projects will introduce you to a lot of different technology and it'll really help to build your technical skills. I want to thank our sponsor today, Sneak. If you're interested in joining the Capture the Flag, just click on the link in the description below. All of the details that you need is there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.